वॉट इज अप गाइज कैसे हो आप लोग इन दिस वीडियो आई थॉट ऑफ एड्रेसिंग अ क्वेश्चन दैट आई हैव बीन हेयरिंग अ लॉट स्पेसिफिकली कंसिडरिंग द फैक्ट दैट आई वॉज राइडिंग द हिमालयन फोर फिफ्टी फॉर द लास्ट फोर फाइव डेज एंड आई हैव ऑलमोस्ट डन अबाउट सेवन हंड्रेड हॉर्ड किलोमीटर्स ऑन द मोटरसाइकिल आई एम नॉट श्योर इफ यू हैव सीन माई डिटेल्ड थर्टी मिनट रिव्यू इट हैज़ अ वेरी डिटेल्ड एनालिसिस ऑफ वॉट द हिमालयन इज एज अ मोटरसाइकिल एंड वॉट इट ऑफर्स बट एवरी वन इन द कमेंट सेक्शन एवरी वन ऑन इंस्टाग्राम हैज बीन आस्किंग मी हाउ डज इट कंपेयर to the ADB 390 and the other big player which is the Scrambler 400X from Triumph now these two motorcycles the ADB 390 and the Triumph Scrambler 400X are kind of in the same price bracket as the Himalayan 450 whether i can call it as a price bracket right now or something uh, which can be termed as a speculated price bracket i think that would be the better word because the pricing of the Himalayan is not out right now assuming that the Himalayan will be priced at around 2.7 2.8 lakhs ex showroom it kind of sits in between or i should say more towards the scrambler 400x from triumph which is priced at 2.6 lakhs ex showroom the adb 390 being at the upper end of the spectrum because it is coming at around a range of about 3.3 to 3.6 lakhs ex showroom but it's kind of offering a lot more things so the question still remains if you are wanting to invest in a single cylinder adventure touring motorcycle that does it all what do you invest in where do you put your money so to address this confusion i'll be just plain simple talking about factors that you should definitely consider when you are considering making a decision between the triumph scrambler 400x the himalayan 450 and the adb 390 from ktm whichever model you are referring to the x model or the standard model or the uh, spoke wheel model that came out in the market i'll just be sharing my thoughts about these three motorcycles because i have ridden all these three motorcycles i think a decent amount of time the scrambler 400x i was part of the media ride which happened uh, a couple of months back and i got to ride that motorcycle in different sort of terrains did some off road soft road and on tarmac riding i had the ktm adventure 390 for about 6 months uh, before i decided to part ways with it so i have ridden that motorcycle also extensively in different types of terrains in the mountains in the plains and obviously the himalayan 450 which i had for a significant amount of time and i have done all sorts of rides so i think i'm kind of qualified to give you my take on these three motor cycles so let's get started with it so the first point that i have listed down is the build quality in this day and age in 2023 and right now the build quality of motorcycles is not something that is going to be a very big differentiating factor we know that the single cylinder adventure touring market is kind of bringing its game up in terms of quality but without a doubt in terms of quality the scrambler 400x seems to be the most visually appealing motorcycle it kind of shows the type of quality in terms of uh, you know the build in terms of the craftsmanship in terms of the color selections of different elements be that beautifully designed leather seat the golden looking forks that the scrambler 400x has and the overall visual appeal of the motorcycle especially in that matte khaki color that i rode during the media ride i feel that the scrambler 400x both from a visual appeal standpoint and the build quality standpoints everything in that motorcycle is miles above the himalayan 450 and the ktm 390 adventure if i have to rate the other two motorcycles in terms of their descending order of build quality it's very difficult to choose between them i would say that the ktm 390 adventure and the himalayan 450 are almost at the same level of the build quality if these two motorcycles are at maybe a 6 out of a 10 then the triumph scrambler 400x will be at a 9 out of a 10 that's how much of a differential i see between the build qualities of these three motorcycles so next up now let's talk about the the most boring part uh, i think the top speed yeah so no matter what type of category of motorcycle you want to invest in everybody why in this indian motorcycling community is so obsessed with top speeds uh, i don't know why i mean if you are wanting to invest in an adventure touring motorcycle top speeds should not matter that much but still that is a question that kind of is there in everyone's mind so i thought why not you know cover that as well we all know that the 390 adventure is the fastest motorcycle out of the three that we are talking talking about the 390 cc engine produces about 44 bhp of power which is 4 bhp more than the himalayan 450 
and the Scrambler 400X. So no surprises there. The 390 Adventure will blow off these two motorcycles in a drag race or in a situation where you have those flat expressways where you can go full all out, all throttle open. The 390 Adventure will obviously touch around 165 and even go to around 170 kilometers per hour. And while we talk about these top speeds, the other two are way behind the 390 Adventure. Uh, I feel that the Himalayan has a max limit of around 155 or 157 sort of kmph. That's what I feel. That's the top limit. Maybe 160 if you have really pushed it big time and hell bent on you know uh, ruining the whole engine and making it sound like a generator. Uh, apart from that, the Scrambler 400X, I feel that it can also go about 130, 135, something like that. I haven't touched those speeds on the Scrambler 400X just because of the fact that when you are reaching those 110, 120 sort of speeds on the Scrambler 400X, the ride experience is the worst. Now that is something that I want to talk about because when you are talking about attaining those top speeds, it's not just what you feel at that moment when you have hit that top speed. It is what happens when you are just about to hit that top speed figure. Maybe you are in the last 10 to 15 percent of your full throttle range. The motorcycle is you know responding in its last breaths to get to that top speed figure. When does that irritating vibration zone come in that motorcycle? Because top speed is something else. There is a zone just before hitting that where you start getting irritated with the vibes. And for these three motorcycles that zone is very different. This irritating vibrations zone comes in the Scrambler 400X the earliest. Even though it is also a 40 bhp motorcycle, I feel just after 115 or 120 kmph that motorcycle becomes really you know kind of unbearable to maintain and sustain those speeds. Surprisingly the Himalayan with its new Sherpa 450 engine that irritating vibrations type of zone comes in at around 130. That is the point after which it starts feeling I mean we are at the last stretches in terms of the power of the motorcycle and that is where you feel that it is getting really uncomfortable but that uncomfortable sort of a feel can be extended to about 155-156 kmph. Talking about the 390 Adventure we all know that irritating vibrations sort of a zone comes in right at the top end. The ADV 390 will just go, go and keep on going till it hits the top speed. So that is where it really shines. Now since we have talked about the speed, I think we should also talk about the torque that these motorcycles produce and where it is produced. Now technically if you look at just the specs, 37 meters of torque on the Adventure 390, 37.5 Newton meters of torque on the Scrambler 400X and 40 Newton meters of torque on the Himalayan 450. So the motorcycle with the highest torque 40 Newton meters the Himalayan 450 shines in terms of its torque delivery that's what I felt it's the most flexible motorcycle because 90% of the torque is delivered which means around 36 Newton meters of the 40 Newton meters of torque in the Himalayan 450 comes in at around 3000 rpm by the way I am extremely impressed with how this Himalayan is behaving at these crawling speeds this is one trait that is super critical for any sort of motorcycle that needs to serve or I should say wear all types of hats possible because when you are selling a motorcycle in India it needs to do everything including a trip to the local bazaar to get some vegetables milk along with a trip to Khardungla, Umlingla and Zanskar so those are high expectations to fulfill and <laughs> till now I trust you me, trust you me, I think this motorcycle is kind of ticking the box in every segment. Talking about the Scrambler 400X, it also has a great torque curve. I feel that it is a very close second to the Himalayan 450. Uh, why the Himalayan 450 shines for me is the overall experience when I compare it to the Scrambler 400X. That is a difference that you will feel when you ride those two motorcycles and I am pretty sure you will echo my thoughts there as well. 80% of the torque, say around 30, is delivered as low as 3500 RPM. So everything comes in very early. And the biggest testament to that fact is 
right now if you see what speeds i am doing and at what gear fifth gear we are doing what 45 50 kmph even if i go into the sixth no issues at all we are in the sixth gear right now and what 50 55 kmph just below 60 very easy let me go as low as possible on the speed and see when the knocking starts typically on a single cylinder that is what you would get and yeah nothing even at 40 kmph nothing absolutely perfect so you can pull this motorcycle in any gear the himalayan and the scrambler 400x neither of these motorcycles will you know have any sort of stalling issues because because the torque curve is distributed in a manner that it supports low speed riding adventure 390 just forget about it you just have to throttle that motorcycle to enjoy it adventure 390 which i feel has the worst kind of torque delivery worst i would say in a sense that from a adventure touring standpoint it has the worst torque delivery curve because at the low speeds i feel that the adventure 390 is something that is a torturous experience i've experienced that myself for a good six months i just couldn't imagine myself riding the 390 adventure at crawling speeds of about 25 30 40 kmph which you uh, you know more often than not get stuck into because you can't expect your motorcycle just to be on the highways all the time and touring and enjoying life to the grandest you have to do a lot of other stuff being uh, owning a adventure touring motorcycle in india go to the market go into traffic maybe commuting in the office traffic hours as well so 390 adventure is something that you would want to you know avoid if you have to do a lot of low speed crawling or you have to use it as a commuting motorcycle so that is where the story ends next up let us talk about the off-roading capabilities now this is where things start to get a little tricky and this is where the level of experience of the rider comes into play uh, Scrambler 400X with its 150mm of travel at the front, 150mm of travel at the rear I don't think is a motorcycle that can take a lot of off-roads let me just put it straight no point in describing a lot of things here although the riding geometry supports you in terms of the position that you want to get when you are saddling the motorcycle it's very comfortable because of those high handlebars reach to the handlebar is not that stretched out you can easily saddle the motorcycle maneuver it the torque curve everything is good but off-roading the level of comfort that you will experience on the other two motorcycle is going to be totally different so i would put the scrambler 400x at the bottom in this sort of a off-road specific comparison now comes the himalayan 450 the himalayan 450 uh, according to me is very good in doing those tough off-roads it has the you know the power it has the torque it has the riding geometry it has the comfort it has the confidence inspiring 21 inch wheel which neither of these two motorcycles has to you know go into terrains where you have a lot of obstacles big rocks and the motorcycle will maintain its steady line when we talk about the adventure 390 now there are purists out there who feel that the adventure 390 is a better motorcycle than the himalayan 450 and there is a reason to that as well although the low end kind of sucks in comparison to the himalayan 450 these guys have the capability of you know throttling out of those tricky situations in a much more confident manner just as an example i am someone who would want to be a little cautious when i'm doing those off-roads because the motorcycle that i'm riding is the only motorcycle that i have i don't want to throw it around and end in a situation where the motorcycle gets damaged so i am always wary of that so i try to be a little cautious and i do not go all out with the throttle when i am seeing the off roads but at the same time there are other people who are so aggressive or i should say so trained in their off road riding skills that the tougher the situation is the more throttle they will give on their motorcycle and let the motorcycle bash around right left which is technically the right way of off roading but for that you need a lot of practice and i doubt if many people have that sort of control and practice on their motorcycle to ride off roads hence i feel for someone who is at an intermediate level or someone who does not do a lot of practice of off-roading or his skills in off-roading are at a normal level not an ad, ad, not at an advanced level the himalayan 450 will do a fantastic job but at the same time if you are someone who is advanced in terms of your skills your off-roading skills your off-roading basics are in place 
place you know where and when to transfer your mate on the motorcycle when you want to throttle out when you want to skid your rear wheel when you want to do a wheelie over an obstacle then I think the adventure 390 will be a much more exciting motorcycle now uh, what else is left vibrations and heat management so let's talk about that as well if we talk about the low-end vibrations the KTM 390 adventure has the most low-end vibrations and feels the most annoying I think I've already talked about it in one of the previous points the scrambler 400 X will not have those low-end or mid-range vibrations it will have those vibrations coming at the top end while the Himalayan 450 has some vibrations at the low end because of its kind of Royal Enfieldish character of the engine but they are not something that will concern you like they would concern you on the adventure 390 but as soon as you move out of the low end the Himalayan 450 is amazing the scrambler 400 X is amazing it's just that the irritating part of the you know the rpm zone where you feel those vibrations getting to you you reach that zone earlier in the scrambler 400x compared to the himalayan 450 when we are talking about the mid-range and the top end there are no vibrations in the ktm ktm is like just wriggle keep on wriggling the throttle keep on opening the throttle and the vibrations will go on vanishing away so that's how these three motorcycles are different from each other if you're concerned about vibrations then i would say just stay away from the adventure 390 until and unless you are someone who just rides with that mindset of opening the throttle overtaking whizzing past traffic you know get Setting top speeds and setting lap records for whatever route you want to do on your next ride talking about heat I feel that the adventure 390 is the worst motorcycle in terms of the heat management it heats a lot it starts heating whenever it's not riding in the zone where it's comfortable and the adventure 390 obviously is comfortable when you are hitting around 80 to 90 kilometers per hour or above on the speedometer anything below that in that you know crawling sort of a commuting sort of a speed range riding around 25 30 40 45 50 kmph you will always feel the heat uh, from the engine coming you will always see that the uh, radiator fan is kicked in making that irritating noise on the other motorcycles like the scrambler 400 x the heat management is obviously much more better than the 390 adventure although the a radiator fan kicks in on the scrambler 400x more often than not when i was riding the scrambler 400x whenever i used to stop the motorcycle i somehow used to realize ignition is off and where is this noise coming from and that noise invariably used to be from the radiator fan on the scrambler 400x but nothing got to my legs in terms of the heat that it was producing almost every time i stop the motorcycle the radiator fan is already kicked in so i've just stopped the motorcycle to show you what sort of to make you hear actually the sound of the radiator fan is switched on and let me just switch off the ignition of the radiator fan now it turns off <laughs> so this is kind of on every time i switch off the motorcycle the himalayan 450 I would say is also very similar to the scrambler 400x in terms of heat management it's just that the heat from the Himalayan sometimes gets to the right leg when you are riding the motorcycle in bumper to bumper traffic and let's see where the temperature is right now the engine temperature is still hovering around the I think the 100 degree mark right now 90 between 90 and 100 that's what I can say so I can feel some sort of mild heat on my right side so this is after all we have done which is not something that was very extreme but what 99% of the audience will be doing is going into those bazaars and getting stuff so a little bit of heat just on the right side which is considerably lower than what used to be the case with the 411 the older himalayan the next part is the pricing um, i can kind of discuss but we can only discuss the speculated pricing i feel that from a value for money standpoint the himalayan if it's priced at a 2.7 2.8 lakh sex showroom is going to throw everything out of the water in terms of value for money because it gives you all those uh, tech features which it was missing it gives you that flexibility of doing almost everything on the motorcycle while the adventure 390 like i said was uh, is a motorcycle which is meant for folks who want to ride hard or are experienced enough to do fast 
off-roading where they can bash their motorcycles the value for money I feel will come with the Himalayan 450 if you get that the scrambler 400x uh, might be value for money just if you look at the price but its capabilities are limited because I feel that you know it can't do a whole lot of things as comfortably as the Himalayan would do or the 390 adventure would do so that's my take on the value for money part of course everything is right now subjective once we get to know the pricing we might have to have this discussion again coming to the second last question uh, that I've been getting which of these motorcycles can be the only motorcycle in my garage <laughs> now this is a tricky question if you want to just do all those city rides if your riding comprises of 90% city and 10% touring then I think you can take the scrambler 400x it's an amazing motorcycle amazing to look amazing build quality is going to be very flickable in the city 10% of touring on the highways 20% of touring on the highways that I think it can do uh, very easily the only gripe that I have with the scrambler 400x is it's kind of a naked motorcycle right it's it's kind of a motorcycle where it will be very difficult to protect uh, yourself from the wind blast when you are doing those long rides on the highways the height of your head in comparison to the I would say the headlight on the motorcycle the console on the scrambler 400x there is a huge amount of difference and you will need a big windshield which will look aesthetically ridiculous on a scrambler and that is something that I personally would not want to get when we talk about adventure 390 uh, I think it can do all the things but the way it struggles at the low end is going to be one factor that you need to consider if, if someone from my family tells me to go into a crowded bazaar and take my adventure 390 the first thing that will come and haunt me in my mind is the sound that the engine makes when it's struggling at low speeds and all that crappy sound of vibrations plastic vibrating and heat coming on my legs that is the first thing that comes to my mind if i have to consider an adventure 390 as a motorcycle for doing everything and specifically that sort of a in traffic bumper to bumper traffic or commuting or going to a bazaar on the adventure 390 the moment you talk about going on the open highways or clean roads adventure 390 will be the most enjoyable one but now when you talk about the himalayan 450 i feel right now it can do everything that's what i have experienced after testing it extensively over the last week it can tour obviously it's a great touring motorcycle with the increased power it, it can be at those 120 130 kmph cruising speeds all day long has the premiumness that is required of an adventure touring motorcycle the seat is comfortable the windshield is fine you can also get an uh, additional windscreen to make things better also it has a great mileage 27 28 kilometers per liter that means 450 kilometers of tank range which by the way is a big factor when you are touring because the uh, adventure 390 i think has a 14 liter tank uh, the scrambler 400x also doesn't have a 17 liter tank so this has the biggest tank range and the service network of Royal Enfield in those remote regions in Ladakh, Spiti and Zanskar along with the ease with which local mechanics can repair a Royal Enfield motorcycle. So if you need that one motorcycle that can do everything, I think I have already you know talked about it. It's going to be the Himalayan 450 at least from my side that I would like to recommend. So those are my concluding thoughts. I thought of making this video in a very random you know face the camera, stand in front of a wall standpoint and share my views because I've ridden these motorcycles extensively over the past two months now i hope this helps you solve the confusion and let me know if you have any other questions shoot your questions in the comment section below and i'll be happy to answer them till the next video guys bye bye